Hello there, and Happy New Year. Welcome to our first fish service of 2021. Did you know that there was actually four wise men? He got rejected from the other three for bringing a fruitcake. <laughs> I hope you enjoy our fish service today. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Fish. I hope you had a good Christmas. I did. This year, I got quite a few pairs of socks, which I found really useful. Because I've lost a lot of pairs of socks recently, and I think that the washing machine probably ate them. I heard a funny joke recently about the three wise men, and seeing how it's just been Christmas, I thought I'd read it to you. The joke goes, the three wise men walk into a barn, see Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus. Joseph asks why they're disturbing them, as his wife had just given birth and needed rest. The, thir the first wise man said, I've brought gold for the child. Jo Joseph thanked him but asked that they leave. Then the second wise man said, I have brought frankincense for the child. Again, Joseph thanked him, but was getting annoyed as they were interrupting a special moment between him and his wife. He then forcefully asked them to leave, when the third wise man said, But wait! There's myrrh!
Such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna dip in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna dip in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. Such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy. Such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy. Hello, my name is Melchior. I am a wise man. I have travelled from the east, and it has taken me many days to get here. I've been following a star in the sky. I've heard of, about the baby Jesus that's been born and wanted to come to see for myself. I've brought him a gift. I wasn't sure what to bring. A soft toy, some nappies, some lotion perhaps, a nice little cardigan that I've knitted. No, there was only one gift for this baby. Some gold, some gold for the new king. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Fish again and it's all about the kings this week. Um, the three kings, the three wise men that travelled from the Far East and travelled following the star to visit the new baby. Uh, baby Jesus. So um, they obviously realised he was a, a very important person. Um, but more about that later. First of all, I'm sure you're admiring my wonderful crown. And I'm sure you can do much better than that anyway. But I'm just going to show you briefly how you can make a crown and be a king yourself. But I'm going to take it off and put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Um, as always, any tricky bits, please do ask an adult to help you because we don't want you spiking yourself with scissors or anything else. So that this crown of mine, I've made really simply from a piece of A4 card. I happen to only have green or white and I figured green was better, but obviously if you've got other colours, we could do it with um, foam. If you've got that, anything really, just be imaginative, even cardboard boxes. But the idea is that you um, divide up a piece of card, and again, you might want an adult to help you with this, but I've divided mine on this side anyway, and that's the same as this crown I was wearing. I've done a strip of six centimetres, another one of six centimetres, and then the rest of the card is slightly deeper, slightly bigger. So when you've cut off your bands, and you've got the top piece, fold it in half so you've got the centre piece, and then you can just do your curly lines, I don't know whether you can see that, there you go. Do your curly lines, however you like. I, the key thing I think is try and make this distance here the same as that, because then it will join up in a, when you've uh, finished decorating it. The idea is that these bands will go around the back of your head. You might not need both of them, or you might just need a little bit of the, the third one, second one. So um, anyway, that's what you can do. And if you don't like that design, you could do this design. There's two designs there. And on this one, I've done gaps of five centimetres. And then the rest of it is the decorative bit at the front. And you can either do diamonds like this and make it, or triangles, I suppose, make it spiky, like a traditional 
uh, Christmas hat. Or you could try your hand at this. I, I drew round a button and then just did by freehand, as you can see. So bear in mind that this bit here is the centre. Where you folded will be the centre. So if you do decide to draw round buttons or anything else that's round, um, make sure that half of it, only half of it, is here. So that the rest of it will be on the other side. Because when you fold it, you can cut round this one. And then you've got the same on both sides and it'll be evenly balanced. Okay, I'm sure you can get your heads around that. That's uh, relatively simple. And then um, for decorating, if you just take your first decorative part first, bit that or that, decorate that first while it's flat. It's a whole lot easier. I've used buttons because I didn't have anything else, but you might have, um, I don't know, you might have some stick-on jewels or whatever. I've made used buttons and I've covered them with sweet wrappers. Um, there weren't many left, actually. I've eaten most of them, but... That wrapper, for example, from Quality Street Box, and I just made, I think I actually did it up in the air, covered a button with some silver foil, and that's easy enough, you can all do that. Uh, just cover it with silver foil, I don't want it too big, I'm not going to do all of this for you, I'm sure you can work this out for yourselves, but just cover it with silver foil, and then with this, and plenty of glue, see look, that looks like a nice ruby now, but you can cut off the excess, see? And um, plenty of glue. I find copy decks is the best for doing this sort of stuff. But it obviously, also, I mean, it obviously depends what you're using. If you've got stick-on um, foam or felt or something, that might do the trick very nicely. But plenty of copy decks, and uh, then you can stick it onto your, your crown like I have here. That is my ruby in the middle. And then I used buttons here and just covered them with silver foil. And again, stuck those on. And these are also buttons. I've done anything with those. They're pretty ghastly buttons, but they work well on a on a crown. And they've got shanks on them. Now, that means they've got a bit that sticks out the back. You see that? Sticks out the back. And you can push that, if you're gentle, push that through the card. And then when you get to the other side, I cut off a very small piece of, um, of cocktail stick or anything like that. And you can just feed it through the shank and then it will keep it secure on the card. Stick some cello tape over the over the inside so it doesn't spike your head and is more comfortable and you'll find that um, that will work quite nicely. And then at the end here I had some sapphires, more buttons covered this time with another sweet wrapper. So um, if you've still got sweets left or you've saved any of your wrappers that will work nicely. And then just to finish off I've actually stapled the, the ends onto the decorative part and I needed to use for my I've got quite a small head so I just needed to use a little bit of extra card to make that work but if you staple it it's easy it holds it tight but again put some cello tape over the, the inside of the staple so they don't scratch your head and lo and behold there you have a crown made for king but as I say I'm sure you can do far better do send in some photos of your results we would love to see them okay good luck bye Right, so now you've made your crowns, put them on and try this out amongst your family. Try asking nicely for something to be done. For example, please would you get me a glass of water? Or try this way as well. That's insisting or directing somebody to do something for you. Get me a glass of water. Now try that out and see which works best. I think you probably know which is going to work best. But it just kind of illustrates that, um, or King's rule, King's tell you what you have to do and what you don't have to do. Um, Jesus wasn't like that. He was more, um, he was one of the people and uh, he didn't rule like that. He wasn't a king in that kingly sense. He was just an amazing person. And um, obviously um, he, he had other ways of persuading people. He talked to them. He told them stories and um, he persuaded them that following God was the, the way forward. Um, that was uh, what they really needed to do and that um, it worked. That so many people listened and, and did just that. So just try that at home, demanding and asking nicely and you'll see the difference, even wearing a crown. Okay, there you go. Bye.
Save the day, take our sins away. Who can rescue us with mighty power? Super Savior to the rescue, Super Savior, mighty to save. Look, look, here comes Jesus, up, up, and out of the grave. Super Savior to the rescue. Super Savior, mighty to save Look, look, and here comes Jesus Up, up, and out of the grave He's the death crusher, death crusher. Sin, smasher. Sin smasher Who's the mighty Super Savior? Jesus! He's the death crusher, death crusher. Sin smasher the mighty super savior Jesus one two three out who can save the day take our sins away who can rescue us with mighty power Super Savior to the rescue Super Savior, mighty to save Look, look, here comes Jesus Up, up, and out of the grave Super Savior to the rescue Super Savior, mighty to save Look, look, here comes Jesus Up, up, and out of the grave Hello fish families. Well today I'm one of the kings that brought a gift to Jesus. Now what did I bring? Oh, you know I'm ever so forgetful. What was it? It was for, for Frankenstein? Oh that doesn't sound right. What was it? Oh it was frankincense. Yes I brought frankincense which is a resin and um it smells, I think it smells a bit whiffy, but they do use it in quite a few churches and it can be used for um, frankincense, oh sorry, incense, um, hence the name, frankincense. And um, it's also sometimes used to help with the symptoms of arthritis. So it's very, very useful. And so it would have been a great gift for a king to give Jesus. Now there's another bit that I think a lot of you won't know about which was a bit about grumpy Joseph. So Joseph was trying to get Jesus to go to sleep and he was trying to keep it all nice and quiet. And then this king turns up and Joseph's like, shh, I'm trying to get the baby to sleep. And the king goes, oh, but I've brought gold. And Joseph goes, well, okay then, bring it in, pop it over there. And, and he goes now, shh, go. And um, another king puts his head round the door and Joseph's like, oh, I'm trying to get the baby to sleep. And he goes, but I've brought frankincense. And Joseph goes, OK, OK, but no more. That's it. I'm not having any more kings traipsing through. And the third king puts his head round the, the door and he goes, but I've brought more. Oh, come on. It was a good joke. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. Bye bye.
So the kings, what did the kings bring to Jesus? I'm sure you all know. Um, it was gold, frankincense and myrrh. And um, frankincense is something that I, I um, used in church last year if you were there. And you'll remember that it's, it's quite a lovely smell, but it's very pungent. It's, it can make you cough and it makes your eyes water, but it's lovely. Um, well, myrrh is actually a relative of frankincense and it comes from the resin, that gooey sticky stuff that will uh, come out of tree bark if you damage the tree bark it sort of bleeds i suppose but it's it's um, a sort of golden yellowy sticky stuff and that's the resin and um myrrh is is a resin but it comes from a particular type of tree related to that which the frankincense um com resin comes from anyway it was used um for anointing it was used uh, for anointing kings and priests and for anointing the tabernacle to make it holy. and uh, But it was also used as anointment in the burial process, not for just anybody, only for the, the important people, the very important people. So that would have been the kings, uh, the high priests again, and, and um, obviously, of course, the three um, wise men, the kings, felt that Jesus was one of those, was going to be one of those, as of course he was. And so um, this was an appropriate gift to give to a king and maybe prophesying, um, foretelling that he would die an early death and uh, by having this, he would be able to be anointed as a king um, with this special myrrh balm. So there you are. Not overly cheerful, but um, that's what it was all about and the wise men certainly knew what they were doing. Okay, there you go. Hello everyone and welcome to our fish service and uh, I do hope you had a good Christmas and a good new year. I'm sure that it was very different to how it was normally when we can get together with many uh, loved ones together. Um, the greatest gift is what we're talking about today. The Feast of Epiphany was uh, last week. Um, or some call it the Three Kings Day, um, when we celebrate um, after that main Christmas day when Jesus was born, um, the the Magi, or the Three Wise Men as they're called, uh, made a journey of many thousands of miles to, to see Jesus in Bethlehem. Um, it's quite interesting really, because we don't know how many wise men there were. Uh, we know that um, they could have been astrologers, um, very important people and by the time they actually reached Jesus um, he was probably around two years old and Joseph and Mary uh, were married in Bethlehem and uh, and living out their lives we don't know um, where they were staying specifically I know lots of the the, the, the stories and the, the the videos that we watch um, show the three kings coming to the stable, but it's probably likely that, that they weren't in the stable at that time. They were probably living in a house or something, but those are some of the unknowns. Um, but they bought gifts. They felt um, God calling them to this special place. Um, 
Jesus was the proclaimed uh, new king, the Messiah. Um, and, you know, Herod, the, the king, um, was, was interested in Jesus' birth as well. Um, he knew the proclamations, the prophecies that had been set before. Um, I think he was a little bit worried about his position as king. He felt a bit threatened. Um, and sometimes we can feel like that as well. In our, in our own personal situations, we can feel a bit threatened when, uh, when, when, when things change and when things, when things happen. Um, but Jesus was, was, you know, he was born, he came into the world to, to serve, to be a humble baby, uh, to be a, a human being on earth growing up, just as all of us have done and all of us are continuing to do on our earthly journey. So we've already heard from the kings um, already about the gold, the frankincense and the myrrh. The gold, um, the most precious gift uh, given um, for, for Jesus. Um, frankincense about kingship, about deity, um, his position as the, as the new Messiah. Uh, and myrrh, which was all about the... Um, the foretelling of the fact that Jesus would have to die. Um, so he would be born into the world, but then he would have to die, um, as we know he did on the cross, uh, which was his sacrifice, his ultimate sacrifice for each and every one of us. So the wise men bought the gifts that they could bring, and um, Jesus just asked us to, to bring what we can, what, what we've got. We've all got gifts. And I truly believe that they have all been given by God. Um, he loves every one of us. Um, just as that star was shining um, up in the sky brightly, guiding those shepherds, the, the kings, to see Jesus, um, God is looking down on us. He, he sees each one of us. He wants to connect with each, other, each one of us. And that really is um, something to be overwhelmed with joy. Um, as it said in Matthew's Gospel in last week's reading, um, the, the wise men were overwhelmed with joy um, when they saw Jesus. So we just need to keep persevering in these tough times. We've just been locked down again, national lockdown. Um, you'll, 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 you'll be at home doing your schoolwork. Um, there'll be, there, you know, there's lots of hard times still to come. Uh, and I just pray and ask you to continue to pray to to keep that faith, keep that hope and to keep that joy, keep that joy that Jesus did come to 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 be with us. And he's still with us. Um, his Holy Spirit is still here guiding us. And um, let's just um, stay together um, as one one uh, family. In, in Jesus Christ. So I hope you I hope and pray that you stay safe and well um, and um, we will hopefully get together again soon um, but please do um, keep up to date by looking at St Margaret's website and, and reaching out to us and, and giving us feedback as well um, and we're trying to do as many things as we can uh, in this remote way. So God bless all of you um, and just remember, Jesus is the greatest gift you could ever want. How do we do Amen? Amen.
So thank you for joining us this month. We hope you've enjoyed meeting the three kings and we look forward to meeting with you again next month, virtually again, on the 14th of February. We thank you, God, for every prayer we have prayed, every song we have sung, all the things we have learned, all the laughter and fun. Thank you for all the joy you bring and our wonderful times together. May we walk with you as each new day begins this day and forever. Amen. <laughs>